The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Molly Kill. I'm Joey Tysick, and we took a week off last week because I needed to use up vacation time, and uh, so I took a little staycation. But now we're back, and uh, we have, well, we don't really have a new national champion, do we? UConn does it again. Back-to-back titles. How did you feel about the national championship, even... You can even go back to the Final Four and stuff if you want. Um, but how was your experience with the tournament, I guess, as a whole this year? I picked UConn to win. Mm-hmm. I saw throughout the year how good they were, how great they were, actually. And it just looked like they were head and shoulders better than pretty much everybody, even when they dropped a few games. Yeah, It's just a regular part of the college basketball season. But they were dominant again. And I, uh, this is probably more impressive than what Florida did in 2006 and 2007 when they beat UCLA and Ohio State, I believe, mm-hmm. in back-to-back championships. What Danny Hurley has built with this UConn team, they're like the perfect modern-day basketball program. Mm-hmm. The way they play, the number of sets they run, and how easy they make offense look. They play hard on defense. They all know what they're doing. Every they're they're just in sync at all times. Yeah, they're always in sync. They have a big that can defend and score when he needs to. They have shooters. They have guys that can drop to the rim. Every they they have everything. Yeah. Plus a high level coach. Mm-hmm. And now I think people don't realize when you look at the blue bloods and teams that have championships in the past twenty five thirty years. UConn has six yeah. in the past 30 years. 25 years. Yeah, 25. Yeah. No team has more championships than them. Duke has what? Four, five. Five total. Five total, right? Yeah. I think in the past 25, they have five. Okay. But, yeah. It, at this point, UConn, they're the best mm-hmm. program in the country. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know how it can be argued. Yeah. I think we talked about it probably early in the season, but we talked about kind of that, like, new age blue bloods of, like, the Gonzagas and UConn, teams like that that have really stepped up in this last, you know, two decades or well, so. U- UConn, they kind of bridged the gap mm-hmm. in between the two because, like, Villanova became, like, right. one of those new ones. Michigan State became one of those new ones. Mm-hmm. UConn was a high-level program, like, starting in the 90s. Yeah. So they've, for a while now, mm-hmm. they've been at a high level. They've had some downs. Yeah. But I, their highs have been some of the best highs in college right. basketball. Right. I think that's their biggest – difference is like their lows are very low yeah but their highs it's like they win a national championship so yeah it's crazy um the game was pretty good for the most part did you watch all the game yeah i i, I fell asleep for some of the <laughs> listen let let's keep less final fours in the west coast yeah so we don't get like tip off so, so late nine o'clock nine o'clock off. yeah watched all the first half first few minutes of the second half then i started Fading in and out. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw the last five minutes. In general, they need to change the national championship times because, one, on Sunday, I did not realize the women's national championship was in yeah, the middle of the day. it was at 3 o'clock. I thought it was going to be later. So I was, like, checking for it later, and I'm like – and then I was looking, and they're like, South Carolina wins another title. And I'm like, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. So – and then, yeah, like you said, UConn and Purdue playing into the late hours of the night for us East Coasters. Um that was kind of tough, yeah, for sure. Especially when the game was like it was fun at the beginning, like it was close back and forth, and then UConn just put the nail in the coffin yeah. and uh, shot them out. I felt like Purdue tried too hard to go to Zach Eady. I know that's like their offense, but they made one three for the whole game, right? 
Did they make one late or something? For a while, they were like one of five. I have to the check three. the stats, but yeah, they they barely took any threes. So in like the first half, I feel like that's just what UConn wanted. Like, be like, okay, Zach Eady will get his, but we're gonna stop everybody else. Purdue shot one of seven from three. Yeah, and they and to a certain extent, they looked like they were scared to. Now UConn's defense was super super good. Um, at stopping it. But at the same time, I saw some open looks that they passed up just to get it into Edie. I don't know. I felt like you should have changed your game plan a little bit. Yeah, there there were many parts. I feel like Matt Painter doesn't draw anything up for his shooters. Mm-hmm. Fletcher Lawyer was uncomfortable Yeah, all game. Mm-hmm. For a lot of this tournament, Fletcher Lawyer has been uncomfortable. Yeah. And I think he needs to figure something out mm-hmm. because whenever he tries to, like, he pump fakes and tries to dribble into the lane. He looks so much different from like real high level college athletes. Mm-hmm. He kind of looks like a like rec league player. <laughs> like they, his stuff was just getting swatted every time he tried to dribble to drop to the rim. Yeah, and he had no chance. Mm-hmm. But Lance Jones, who was like their best shooter in this tournament, never really got it going. Right. Uh, Braden Smith shoots like well over forty percent from three for the season didn't shoot that much in the tournament. Like mm-hmm. it was he, all Zach Eady focused and it got them to the championship. Yeah. But you can't win a championship playing like that. Yeah. They had Stefan Castle on Braden Smith a lot. And I felt like that, that size that size difference. Because yeah. Castle is a all of six five, maybe six six. Um so he's a big guard. Braden Smith definitely not he's as listed big. at six six two fifteen. Yeah. So like yeah. he's a big guard and I think he, he gave Smith a lot of problems. But it's it's crazy because UConn now, I think it's they broke their own record of like the biggest margin of victory for a tournament like as a whole. Yeah, and they won the most consecutive tournament games by like yeah, I believe it's like thirteen plus points, mm-hmm. not just double digits, but thirteen yeah. plus points specifically. Right, because this year they won their average margin of victory was like fifteen or sixteen points, and it, last year it was like ridiculous. eleven or twelve. To dominating the NCAA tournament, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I've seen te- a team do it like this. Yeah, and, and I think the, the the biggest thing, too, is that they replaced a lot of guys. Yeah. They had to. They lost Jordan Hawkins. They lost Andre Jackson. They lost uh, their big man, uh, Sonogo. Yeah, Adama Sonogo. Yes. Um, so they had to replace all those guys. Now, of course, they still had um, guys ready to go, but they – they had to do some roster swaps and stuff and get some guys, and they all worked out really well. But I think, t- to me, and I'm you can disagree, but I think the biggest guy in that game was one of their smallest players, Cam Spencer, one of my favorite players. He has been a lights-out shooter yeah. for pretty much the whole season. He hits, like, half of his threes. Yeah, but he was also the hustle guy. He had, like, 10, 11 rebounds in that game. He was getting steals. He was causing problems. He had eight rebounds. Yeah. yeah, and two steals. So, like, he was just causing havoc all over the place. And uh, that was fun to watch. Like, the effort that that I felt like UConn gave was just that much more than Purdue. So Yeah, and all, all of UConn starters played 30-plus minutes. Mm-hmm. They had one person off the bench play over 10 minutes, and it was Hassan Diara. Yeah. They, they just, yeah, they let the starting five just get it done. Mm-hmm. Now the question is, can they do it again? I I don't even know the last time a team won three straight. Yeah, I don't either. It might go back to like UCLA in the sixties or something. Probably it would have like, to be. Yeah, no old. team has been that dominant in college basketball in a very long time. Yeah, and they're gonna have to replace even more. I think this year. Yeah. Klingon is gone. Cam's- I think this was Tristan Newton's last year of eligibility. Cam yeah. Spencer's last Stephon year. Stephon Castle is a lottery pick, most likely. Like, there's too many guys that they're gonna lose. Like their entire starting lineup, most likely. Yeah, it looks I wouldn't like be surprised. It. Uh, Alex Caraban. Yeah, he is... was the one I was gonna. Alex Caraban is listed as a sophomore. Okay. So he might be like the guy next year. Maybe. And let, they had Samson Johnson, the big man off he the looked, bench. He looked good. He'll probably be their starter. Mm-hmm. They had a few other four star guys. They'll probably go back into the portal. Danny Hurley has completely mastered mixing recruiting with the transfer portal. Yeah. It's it's like. It's insane how well balanced they've been. Mm-hmm. Um, to the Purdue side, I I, th- I think it's a it's a pretty like hot topic right now. 
Do you think Zach Eady is going to go in the first round of the draft? Yes. You think somebody's just going to take a chance? Now, do you think he's going to go back into the first half, or do you think somebody's going to really make a big splash and try to go for it? I'm thinking between, like, 15 and 25, probably. Okay. Should he go that high? No. But this is going to be like a role-player draft. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be many superstars. Right. And there's going to be, like, a winning team that will say, why not? Yeah. Just take a shot on a guy that you could possibly put in for a – Short amount of time that could get you like six points. Yeah, six funny, easy points. The funny thing, I think his like NBA comp is Boban. <laughs> it, it might like, be just go in. All the, Boban has even more shooting touch than him. He does now. But Boban Zach is a good free throw shooter, right? Boban's but, one yeah. of the most efficient NBA players, like ever. Basically, yeah. He I'm comes in. Cause Zach Eady shot seventy one percent from the line this year. Yeah, and seventy three the year before. So he's not bad. So. I I even think there's a bit of an element where if you leave him open, he should be able to hit open mid-range jumpers. Yeah, I, I think that would be the next development to his game yeah. that he needs. He needs just some sort of little mid-range game just to keep the defense honest. But um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm torn because I, I see the potential. It sucks that he's in this era because you think back in the early 2000s, he'd be a top pick, which is just crazy yeah. how the how the game changes. Um, but I, I do think that I agree. Like he could be a really nice role player. I can't think of the perfect team at the moment, but when we get closer to NBA draft, we can talk about it, but just kind of curious. Yeah. Going beyond Zach Eady, I have a question Okay, that doesn't just deal with Purdue with big 10 basketball in general. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for a big 10 team to win a national championship? I wrote that down on my list because Again, I heard 97-1 talking about it, so it made me think about it too, though. Can the Big Ten win? Not the way that they're playing. Like, I agree with what people are saying. Like, Big Ten basketball, the way that it's been played is like old, gritty, pound the rock in the uh, in the paint. That's just not how the game is played these Listen, days. The, the last person that almost did it and should have done it, honestly. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Luke Hancock going crazy in that Trey Burke block, that was a block called yeah. a foul. Michigan should have won in 2011. Yeah. And they got back in 2018. Got torched but they yeah, they played Dante. they played they played a bunch of future pros and they weren't really they weren't equipped to win that year. Well, they, they weren't just equipped, made a good run. They weren't equipped to stop Dante DiVincenzo. They weren't. But uh, Jalen Brunson, you you had True. A, you had like five or six NBA guys. Yeah. But you you John Beeline played like just differently enough mm -hmm. and like offensively sound to make runs in March. There aren't any Big Ten teams that play like that right now. No. And even like Nebraska was kind of like offensively inclined, but mm -hmm. they didn't have enough talent to really get over yeah. the hump. Like I would say the closest one for me would be Illinois. They had Terrence Shannon, they, they had some shooters around. They didn't have enough besides him and yeah. Bill Mask, though. Right. Those are like the two, and then everybody else just wasn't ready. Yeah, they're, they're other role players. Like, Luke Goody is a good three-point shooter, but yeah. not to that volume. Um, and I think that's why Purdue was able to make the final this year was because uh, they upped their three-point shooting. Last year, they shot hardly any. They were, like, one of the lowest percentages. They were one of the slowest-paced offenses. This year, they upped their pace. They upped their three-pointers. And look, they made it to the final. So I think Big Ten teams should take note of that. Um, the other hard part, too, is it, there's like this weird mix. Like we, we said we want Michigan State to try to go after more local guys like Purdue does. But at the same time, if you want to win a national championship, you got to go somewhat you gotta outside. Get, you got to get like one guy at least that's outside big name maybe. Well, that the, Tyson Walker was from the outside. Yeah. That, like that transfer portal – and recruiting, it could go for both. Right. But so there's like this weird happy medium with that. Um, and I, they just have to change their ways. And I, I, I don't know. There's, I, I, again, I don't want to get into the MSU stuff, but Tom Izzo doesn't seem like he's going to be that kind of guy. The, the interesting part, though, is Dusty May. What does he do coming to yeah. Michigan? He, he could be the ultimate wild card. Because, Even though we haven't seen you know, anything he, yet. He doesn't though. have like a, a Big Ten background. He's just coming in. FAU plays at a higher pace a little bit. So Yeah, from what he said, even in his press conferences, 
he's noted that like he'll sometimes frustrate Michigan fans mm-hmm. with how like updated and how future like future driven he is with offense. Yeah. Like he wants to get threes up. He wants to run up and down. Like more just letting his guys play than running a bunch of sets. Right. Which is kind of anti Big Ten basketball. Yeah. And to yeah. me though, what is why is that why would that be frustrating for Michigan fans? Would you be frustrated, Malik, if they change their offense? And- if it, if listen, if it's entertaining basketball, that's better than anything we've gotten in the past two years. Yeah. So I don't expect to be frustrated. I expect some, at least like decent quality basketball. And that's something that I've always said about basketball. And I don't want to get into my normal rant, but like a coach can only do so much. Like you can run sets, but at the same time, players are still having to react to these sets. Yeah. If you have like a, it's it's like. I hate using motion because I hate that everybody runs a motion offense and they're all different. That's like a, the base for a lot of stuff right. that people run. But so, like, you set up a motion offense and you let the players play within that motion offense. And that's where you find out who has good basketball IQ and stuff. And that's how you, you get players to to learn how to play the game together. Whereas, you know, being robotic and doing the exact same thing every time. So, Yeah. I like the idea. I, I hope more teams do it, but for the Big Ten as a whole, I I don't know when they're going to win. I, it, this was the closest they've gotten in a while. Um, the last time was would have been Michigan in 2016, right? 18. It, was it 18? Yeah. Okay. Um, before that, Wisconsin in 2015? Yeah, when they lost to Kentucky. And so I – I don't know. But like, they like there there has to be some type of if Purdue they they have Braden Smith is one of the best point guards in, in college basketball. Mm-hmm. But you have to have two at least two guards that can really like score. Yeah. Like having Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer, mm-hmm. that was that's like the perfect balance. Tristan Newton could could score off the dribble. Cam Spencer could too, but he's more of a guy that's gonna score off of pump fakes and like catch and shoot. So yeah. And then the the last national championship for a Big Ten school, do you know who it is? Still 2000. Yeah, Michigan State. It's still 2000. Like, and that's crazy. Yeah. Michigan State made it twice, 2000 and 2009, was it? Yeah. I believe it was 2009 when they lost to Tyler Hansborough. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Michigan made it twice. Right. And Wisconsin made it once. Yeah. So Big Ten teams have been close, but just getting over the hump, they can't do it. Um, I, actually, Mar- well, Maryland was in the ACC. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, Maryland wasn't in the Big Ten yet, but right. they won in 2002. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. And are we wrong again? Did Indiana win or did they lose? Indiana lost to Maryland, I think, in 2002. Indiana made it, though. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. So if we wanted to take Maryland as an honorary, but even then, that's 22 years ago yeah. or whatever. That's like the gold period of college basketball. Shouts out to Juan Dixon. Yeah. And then again, when you look at like that Michigan State roster, loaded with NBA talent. Yeah. Loaded. The Flintstones. Mateen Cleaves, not so much, but great. One of the great college players. But like Morris Peterson was on that team. Jason Richardson was on that team. Charlie Bell was on that team. Like there is names on that team. So I don't know. I don't know when they're going to get back. Um, the Big Ten just doesn't seem in a good place right now. And I don't know, like with Purdue losing Zach Eady, now they always tend to get another seven footer in their roster. And I know they yeah. got the, the the guy they have on the bench didn't yeah, play all season. He's, so he's we'll like have to see how he, he might be he seven does. five to be honest. I don't know if you he's watched. Huge. He looks taller. They, than they Zach have Eady. another kid committed, by the way, from like New Hampshire or something at seven it. foot three. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt. So yeah, they're just keeping it rolling. They they always do that. Um but they still need to adapt. They they need to adapt, and they got yeah. close. They can't expect that this next guy is going to dominate like Zach Eady. Right. Because the guys before him, Isaac Haas didn't. Right. Matt Harms, neither of those guys did what Zach yeah. Eady could do. And even Zach Eady took a little bit of time, yeah. too. He he did, wasn't no, that He player. played early, but it, yeah, it took time. Yeah, he wasn't that guy right out the gate. And then, so we got Purdue and Illinois. Illinois is going to lose Terrence Shannon. Um, yeah, we both like the like rises of Northwestern and Nebraska, but... What can you honestly expect from Northwestern and, and Nebraska? And are they going to get the recruiting? Uh, exactly. Like Casey Tominaga, his story's already over. And that was like the big thing for Nebraska. How do they replace that? Yeah. 
So like Northwestern recruits good college basketball players. Yeah. I did. They hear, never have those guys that can take you over the top. Isn't uh, isn't Brad Underwood recruiting AJ Stork to come to Illinois? Yeah, he isn't is. That's a yeah. Okay. So mm, AJ Stork's not Terrence Shannon, but I was about to say I, Terrence Shannon is better than AJ Stork. But it's still AJ Stork is also quality. younger. Yeah, yeah, he's still a quality player. AJ Stork was a second year college basketball player. But I don't, I don't know who's going to make that ne- next leap for the Big Ten, because I it's, think it's Purdue, to, I think yeah. Purdue is going to come back down to earth. Will it be one of the West Coast teams? Eh, that's true. Because or because they're they're not yeah. affiliated technically with the Big Ten. Culture. Musselman is at USC. Yeah. UCLA is that, going in the transfer portal to get guys again. Oregon has consistently been good for a while. Yeah, that's that's a good point. It could be just, you know, a non-traditional Big Ten team. Yeah. At this point, and that's what. That's what might help the Big Ten in general. These teams coming in with different offenses, the traditional Big Ten teams, having to play them every year, maybe that pushes the conference. But I don't know. I, I the We're going to have to find out a nickname. But the traditional Big Ten teams, that's what I'm going to keep going with. Yeah, They need to figure something out. And there's also some weird cases like Iowa – does not play traditional Big Ten basketball. Yeah, they're all about shooting and running and scoring. But they, they're, but they're, they don't have the, they don't have the talent yeah. to get over the. They're top. like, and they play no defense. They're like <laughs> just above Northwestern and Nebraska, I think, where they like they, they can get some talent, but they're still below the top schools. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know, it, it's a weird weird spot, and I don't I don't know. The only nice thing I think is that. Like, people were really high on the Big 12 this year. Where did the Big 12 end up? Listen, it, at home. It, it's a thing of the past at this point, but we th- we were pretty sure Houston would have won if Jamal Shedd didn't get hurt. He got, hun- he got hurt, Maybe. unfortunately. Yeah, he did. And that messed up the groove of Houston. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, uh, Kansas didn't have Kevin McCullough. That's true. Yeah, the to the top teams in the Big Twelve didn't have that's their a, guys. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I forgot about Kansas. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, but even still, like a lot of the Big Twelve teams kind of fell. Um, so yeah, the Big Ten, they got some some figuring out to do. Um, and is there anything else out of college basketball that you wanted to bring up before we move on? Or is, is Danny Hurley already an all-time great head coach? That's tough. Um, because there, there's a short list of coaches that have just done what he's done. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think as long as, at this point, as long as he just has good seasons now. Because, like, he's, if he's in the top 50 all-time, yeah, that, that puts you on an elite list. Right. I think he just needs a little bit longer of a tenure, and he'll be like he doesn't even have to do anything really at this point. He just needs to kind of yeah. keep coaching, have some successful seasons, um, maybe make another Final Four or something. But I think yeah, I, I think he'd be easily up there. Yeah, it it took Coach K. I think he started at Duke in like the seventy nine or eighty. Ninety one, ninety two was when he won his back to back championships. Jay Wright didn't win a championship until like his four. 13th, 14th year at Villanova. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of guys a long time. Yeah. And what is this? Danny Hurley's like fifth year at UConn? Mm-hmm. Something, he hasn't been there very long. No. And he already has them back to dominance. Tom Izzo's been searching for his second forever. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Like yeah. He's, he's accomplishing things very quickly. Mm-hmm. And he has a long way to go, hopefully. Right. And now, with UConn being back on top, and it's seeming like, you know, it, it seems like they're getting even better recruiting than they've ever gotten. Stefan Castle was a five-star kid. Mm-hmm. McDonald's All-American. Yeah. Because even after, like, the Kemba Walker era, the, the Kemba Walker run was the surprise run. Shabazz Napier's run was almost even more surprising. Yeah. But, but after each of those championships, yeah. their, their recruiting didn't, like, rise yeah. like crazy. I they, feel like they now. Dropped, I think people kind of forget they dropped down to the American for a few years. Yeah. Like they they were irrelevant mm-hmm. for like three or four years. Yeah, and I think like I don't know if it's the Dan Hurley effect, but it seems like people want to come play for him. So it will be interesting to see. They might take over 
well, they're not. It stinks because UConn is not a small school or not like a surprise school necessarily, but I feel like they're going to be that Gonzaga team that you see like every year and you you start to grow tired of, tired of, although they get over the hump. Yeah. Also, Danny Hurley turned down the Kentucky job, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure he's at UConn to stay mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah, it seems like he's having fun. That's for sure, which is cool to see. I like the fire that he brings. I think it's fun. Um, all right. Let's shift over to the NBA for a quick second, give some updates. Um, the Pistons just uh, dropped one of the most random 50 bombs in uh, NBA history. Malachi Flynn, my guy. He was my guy. I know. I was like, let, let's not let's not change the story. We both he can be your guy. We both like Malachi Flynn. My first year yes. of like being on the San Diego State train, <laughs> yes. was the Malachi Flynn Aztecs. Yeah. I always thought he could be something in the NBA as a role player off the bench. So did I. Um, never really turned into that. And then just a couple weeks ago, decided against the Hawks he was going to drop 50. This, stuff like this shows you how much better NBA players are <laughs> yeah. than the rest of the world. Mm. Like Malachi Flynn is like a seventh or eighth man yeah. on bad teams. When people say that the Yukon Huskies could beat the Pistons, we laugh. Amen. Listen, Malachi Flynn couldn't play on the Knicks. Right. Goes to the Pistons and drops 50. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Do you think the only more random 50-point game to me is the Tony Delk game? Do you think I completely forgot about the Tony Delk game. Exactly. Like the the last extremely random ones I remember were both Timberwolves players. Yeah. Uh, Corey Brewer, mm-hmm. which was the just hilarious, right, and good for Corey, and then old Mo Williams, yeah, <laughs> dropping fifty two, mm-hmm. and oh, you can't forget about Andre Andre Miller, oh, dropping fifty in that's, Dallas. That's a that's a good <laughs> yeah. one. That 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 was one that made everybody scratch their heads. Yeah, because he was Andre a, was like thirty three, thirty four, not a scorer. Yeah, and that's he a just good lost one. it. Yeah, but um. For me, like, Flynn might be the most because what he's the only the third player in NBA history to do get 50 off the bench, and he also did not shoot very many threes, which was weird. I think he hit, like, seven threes. Yeah. He was, like, 15 Wild. to 26 from the field. Or so. it, mm-hmm. it was, like, an efficient 50-point yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. It was wild. Like, this is stranger than the Sadiq one. Yeah, it was. Because, again, with some of these other guys, like Sadiq, higher draft pick. It's random, yeah. but it's not crazy. Corey Brewer, super talented college player. Always thought he had potential. Yeah, became a role player, like, instantly as he Never fully league. worked out in the NBA. Surprise, but not the craziest thing. Mo Williams, starting to get a little crazier. But at the same time, he played a lot of meaningful minutes in a lot of big games. It's just weird that it happened towards the end of his yeah. career. Um, Tony Delk was the weird one because he was. See, I didn't even remember the Tony Delk one. Tony Delk was, I think, aging at that point too. Already, what team was he on? I think it was on the Hawks. I was about to say, was it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was. I the think Hawks. it was the Hawks. I don't know. I'll, I'll hit Google real quick. And then, keep going. <laughs> um, Andre Miller. That's the one I forgot about. Tony Delk's well, fifty-point game. Was for Phoenix. Oh, okay. He so, was a he was yeah, a Phoenix son. Even more random. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Tony Delk on the Hawks was kind of his his quote unquote heyday. Yeah, Andre Miller had fifty two against Dallas in twenty January thirtieth, twenty ten. Dang. Was he yeah. playing for the Nuggets at that time? Or? He was playing for the Trailblazers. Trailblazers. Yeah. Wow. It's hilarious. <laughs> Dang. He was 34. 34 year old Andre Miller. Man. And then the other, like, pseudo-random one is Jamal Crawford in his 40-year-old season or yeah, whatever. That, that was incredible. But That was just him showing how much talent yeah. he still had. Right. But, that again, that one's not crazy random because we knew he could do something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, this one, this, this one is up there. I'm trying to think. The, almost number one. Do you know who the third guy off the bench to score 50 is? Because it's Malachi Flynn, Jamal Crawford, and I think it's some one other person. And I can't think of who it is. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I could. I'm about if to, it was maybe Corey Brewer, um, I'm pr- I think Corey was. Was it Corey? He might have been starting. 
50 points. But because oh. Malachi Flynn did something that those guys didn't, and I can't remember exactly what the stat is. I wish I would have wrote it down. Nick Anderson. Nick Anderson. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have gotten that one. No. I wouldn't have either. And see, even that one isn't as random because he was a really yeah. good He was really man talented. Yeah. For them. Really good shooter and stuff like that. So, yeah. Malachi Flynn or Andre Miller? Which one do you think is more? Listen, I, I prefer the Andre Miller one because he wasn't known for offense. Yeah. And he was old and, like, close to getting out of the league soon. Yeah. And he just scores 52 out of nowhere. That That's a good point because he was older. Malachi Flynn at least had been known as a scorer at one point. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I might agree with that. But Malachi Flynn, he, he might be number two. Uh, in terms of name... People are going to forget this very soon. Oh, yeah. Easily. Like, people know Andre Miller. Yeah. But they don't remember his 50 <laughs> no, much. No, I definitely not People know the name Andre Miller. Right. I forgot he even played for the Trailblazers. Trailblazers, Listen, He played for honest. a lot of – he so, played for probably seven or eight teams. Yeah, I know. He he moved around towards the end, yeah. but that that's wild. Um, Pistons are still trash. Um, Understatement. Wizards are still trash. Um, There's one interesting tidbit on the Wizards. There's one. Yeah, what is that? Joey, have you heard? Uh, probably not. Of Tristan Vukovic. No. Seven foot kid, 230. I think he literally started playing. Let me look at his stat sheet. He started playing last month. Nice. Like I don't know what country he's from. He was a second-round pick uh, in last year's draft, pick number 42. He hasn't played all year. Okay. And since they started playing him, he's averaging 7-4 and 43% from the field. Hmm. And, like, he has a little bit of – he's young. Yeah. He's 21. And it's something for the Wizards. (laughs) It's something. Sure. Like, it is an interesting young piece. Yeah. Of a second round pick that you found. Also, Denny Avdia is actually turning into a good player, which I I respect him. He he needs to get traded. Him and Corey Kispert. Yeah, Corey they're, Kispert, bo- they're both turning into like very solid pros. Yeah, apparently Corey Kispert's been shooting pretty good again. Yeah, which is nice to so see. Like, did, Denny Avdia is like legit good. Look at his shooting splits: like fourteen, seven rebounds, four assists, and fifty percent from the field. Mm-hmm. That that's a winning player. Yeah. Is Jordan Poole one of the worst free agent signings of all time? Yes. That's Top so five. sad. It, it is, it's tragic. Isn't it crazy how much of a fall off he's had in, what is it, three like, years? People predicted he would average like close to 30 mm-hmm. on this team just because of his raw talent and having the ball so much. Yeah. And it just went downhill. And if you look at like. He shouldn't have gotten that much freedom. Something that I, I saw somebody else point out, I wish I remembered exactly who it was, but. Uh, Jordan Poole has dipped down in efficiency for the last, like, three years. So, like, his breakout season was, what, 2021, I think? He had the breakout season, and then the next season he felt like he should have had more minutes. And he averaged 20, Mm -hmm. but he was kind of, like, in a bad mood for a lot of the season. Yeah. And his his efficiency dropped. And then last year with the Draymond thing, it all fell apart. So he moved on to the Wizards. People thought he was going to get a – whole new lease on life and he's been awful and he's a washington wizard yeah and he (laughs) has some of the craziest highlights that you'll see out there he has his low light tape from this year yeah is going to feed so many negative people on social media forever Mm -hmm. it's it's very sad yeah a little bit funny mostly sad Mm -hmm. oh man i didn't realize they have eugene omarui former piston oregon's own former piston Listen, they got, that tells you that that's bad. The yeah, Pistons yeah, dropped right. him, and then the Wizards picked him up. Now, they yeah. they do have Tyus Jones hurt, which is – he's been pretty good, actually, for them. But, yeah, there there's some bad bottom feeders for the NBA. Um, oh, the one important one that I wanted to talk about, the Knicks. Losing Julius Randle for the season. That's so disappointing. It's disappointing. But I don't I I don't think with Julius Randle they were making some type of crazy run. Yeah. They need him to like win more games. Mm. But I kind of prefer this team that they have 
like just watching this team. Okay. Like I, I like watching them more with Julius Randle off the floor. And that's not saying like I wish he'd stay hurt, but yeah. I yeah, I, I just like how scrappy they are and everybody plays hard, everybody plays a role. Mm-hmm. It's exciting to watch. Yeah. Um and Isaiah Hartenstein's been pretty good for them, to be honest. I don't is he starting now with Julius Randle? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Have you seen the interactions with him, Jalen Brunson, and Josh Hart? Yes. <laughs> We're going to move on from that one. Uh, have you noticed one of your guys is out for the rest of the year? Um, Probably. A lot of my guys get hurt. The red-headed time. shooter in Sacramento. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kevin Herter. I, I know that broke your heart. <sighs> him and Malik Monk are out for the year. Yeah. That makes me more sad than the New York stuff. Like, I yeah. I really like these, these young kings. Mm-hmm. And them losing not just Kevin Herter, but their yeah. best scorer off the bench. The worst part, yeah. and I'll admit, Kevin Herter has been having it. He had had a tough season. Yeah. wasn't shooting very good. Kind of saw it in the playoffs last year even. The sad part is Malik Monk was killing it. He was cooking. When he came in. Uh, as soon as Kevin Herter went down, he stepped up, and now he's hurt. That, that is, that's a good point. That's an, that's an unfortunate injury. Yeah. Um, oh. My other team, though, the Pelicans. I still don't know how to feel about them. Brandon Ingram, Ingram has been hurt for a while, but Zion, Zion's been balling, and that's that's good news. The bad news is he's doing it without Brandon Ingram, and that's been the problem the whole time. Yes, yes. <laughs> the whole time is it seems like they can't play together. I I think at this point it, they honestly can't coexist. Yeah, and that's tough. And I don't know how they move on from that. Because they already missed their window. Trey Murphy has been insane. Trey Murphy is a guy I would love for the Pistons to go after. I'm now, not even, Until we get to the I Pistons know. episode, I know. I'm keeping all of my major thoughts to myself because... <sighs> but Trey Murphy's deal is over... Is it after this year or next year? I can't remember. It's coming up. I would be watchful for the Pistons. Save some money. Can I throw out a random thought that I think is possible and could be crazy? Go for it. I think Golden State might be hitting their stride right now. I tried to tell you. Near the end of the season. I've been trying to tell you. At the very last minute. You can't tell me when they're hitting it at the very last minute. No, but I I told you if they make it into the play-in game, I would be nervous for that other team. Okay, you were right about that. I didn't remember that one. So I, 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 I think there's a chance they could get into the last spot. Yeah. And boy, that would be scary for Minnesota. Yeah. Because I said... That would be scary. So what I said a couple weeks ago, and might have been even been a month ago, I said if the Lakers and Warriors get in, now they might end up having to play each other now, um, but if they get into the play-in and they make it to the playoff series, at the time, it was Minnesota and OKC. And I said those yeah. two young teams would be scared to play the two veterans. If they got to play Denver, that that's a different thing, right? I agree, hundred yeah. percent. If they play Denver, I don't give them as much of a chance. But if those one of those two teams plays one of the young teams, then I'd be nervous. Especially like you said, the Warriors above the Lakers because yeah. the Lakers are a little more wishy washy. But the Warriors, when they get going, and they just what well, we just talked about it, we, they broke a record for three point percentage in a game. Yeah. They hit, it was like 62 or 63%. Yeah, 26 of 41 or something like that. That's crazy. Draymond Green started the game, like you said. You said five of five from three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Steph Curry went six of six. Klay Thompson had the worst shooting. He was five of ten from three. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if, if they get going, and I feel like Jonathan Kaminga's kind of figured his role out a little bit more with that team. The only one that hasn't figured it out is Andrew Wiggins. He's still the, kind of the one that's struggling. He, he's he been playing better lately, mm-hmm. like very recently. I think a move they need to make is it, it's too late to like make an r- actual move, but I, I think Jonathan Kuminga doesn't fit with the, what they want to do. Okay. Whenever he is like doing individual things, he looks really good, mm-hmm. and his talent has improved, but I don't think he helps the Golden State win at all. Yeah. Like, I, 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 just, I really don't think he does. Mm-hmm. My favorite part, too, 
This was another draft day call. I don't know if you remember, but I can bring up the tape if I needed to. Trace Jackson Davis has given them meaningful minutes. Yeah. And I loved that draft pick at the end of basically the end of the draft. Um, I liked it. I thought he was a little underrated. I know people thought, you know, he's a Big Ten guy that I think people didn't realize how athletic he is, I think, and maybe thought that he was more of just a post-up kind of guy, which, I mean, at the end of the day, he is for his offense, but he moves with the ball well, um, and he's not just some statue big man out there. So he's given them a lot of good minutes. Um, So, yeah, I, I would agree. I think the Warriors could be that that dangerous team um, moving along. The weird part is still in the play-in scenario is Phoenix, Sacramento, uh, LA, and Golden State. All like former top teams. And they're going to be all playing for the play-in. I think that's going to be interesting. I have a question about the East. Okay. Since the West is obviously pretty stacked and mm-hmm. there's interesting stuff all up and down, is this one of the worst Eastern conferences in a while? Um... Probably not statistically. Milwaukee has not been very good under Doc Rivers. No, they have not. I don't know who has faith in Cleveland. Do you? No, I Okay. No. The Knicks lost Julius Randle. Yep. I like I like the Knicks a lot. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson might be my favorite player in basketball right now. Yeah. But they're not making a run. Orlando's too young. Mm-hmm. They're good. They've improved a ton. Good for them. But they're not ready. Indiana's just weird. Mm-hmm. Like Tyrese Halliburton has really fallen off yeah. since that stretch where everybody was saying like he's one of those new young superstars. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard a word about him in months. Yeah. Honestly, like since the All-Star break, I really haven't heard anything about him. Yeah. And you forget that Pascal Siakam is on that team because I mean, I mean maybe part of it is because they're the Pacers. They don't get a lot of coverage, but at the same time, you think that that would have been the move that put them over the top. You would have talked about them more, but they don't. Uh, Philly just got him beat back. Yeah, but, but when, he kind of scared. He almost hurt himself again, Yeah, which was scary. And they had to go into double overtime to beat the Spurs. So I don't know how that Listen, is. I, I personally, I would have just shut him down for the rest of the year. But I don't know if they think they can make some type of run with Nick Batum starting at the three. Mm-hmm. and old Kyle Lowry at the one and no real bench. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, know. I don't mm-hmm. know. While we're on this, since we're talking about the Sixers and they played the Spurs, what is your take on Victor Wembanyama? Like, what is the update here? Because, uh, did you see the a new, um, yeah. commercial Nike posted on social media? Um, the one with like his logo, are you saying? Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's one of the best. Like saw like parts of it. It's one of the best like first introducing logos of a superstar I've ever mm-hmm. seen. That yeah. alien logo with the two checks is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty. People yeah. were ranking it among like top logos, and the only one that I saw people saying was better was Jordan's logo, which makes sense. It's iconic. It's clean. Yeah, it it looks amazing. But and in terms of him as a player, he just he keeps doing stuff. Mm-hmm. He keeps doing things. Yeah, he's, he's doing stuff <laughs> that don't compute. Mm-hmm. Like it, they, it, if you if you saw it in two K, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah, you would call it cheating. Yeah, that scoop dunk mm-hmm. where he spun off, went under with his left arm and still dunked it. Yeah, like, well, and then I think last night or maybe a couple nights ago, he did a left to right cross behind the back, which is basically like a Jamal Crawford move. Like you go left to right, you're moving to your right. And then you go behind the back, back to the left, so you get the defender off balance. You go back left, and he jams it. I'm like I, I've seen him do that. I've seen him do crossover dribbles at the top of the key into like step back threes. Mm-hmm. He did another sham god if, <laughs> last night. Yeah, like he's just I, I playing with. People. I don't. Yeah, he's just playing around. <laughs> There's no way to explain what this young dude mm-hmm. can be. Right. He's averaging twenty and ten right now. His numbers have improved throughout the season. Yeah. I, I just by the end of his second season, what will he be? Mm-hmm. By the end of next season, yeah. Like, will he be a top ten player already? He's got to be. 
He's got to be. And the other thing, and I, I, I know we don't want to bring it up all the time, but just imagine if he was a piston. How much different I think things would be. Why <laughs> do you bring this? I, I don't understand. Because it, it there's it, thinking about this does nothing. Because again, it's gonna. I'm just. We're all putting it into the world. We got screwed in the NBA lottery, and watch. We're gonna get the number one pick this year in one of the worst draft classes of all time. I'm just saying. What if the Pistons didn't draft a ton, like most of the bums they drafted in the past 15 years? Yeah, that's what if a, they didn't do that. That's a super valid point, but I'm just saying. What if they didn't sign Ben Gordon in 2010? <laughs> They like they had a draft with a consensus number one, and they missed it. Like the other drafts, they, just, they didn't miss it. They just couldn't get it. That's what there's I mean. a difference. That's what I mean. yeah. But like like the they other, missed on Stanley Johnson. Right. The other drafts, you're like, okay, well they they thought this they guy missed was on better. The French kid. Yeah. Whose but name like, I won't even say anymore. But it's just like, ugh, that stuff's frustrating. The more frustrating one is Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. Because he was there, mm-hmm. but it even was possible. even when we got Cade, the disappointing thing about that number one pick was we knew Cade was really good, but we also weren't sure if he would be like a generational talent, and that was like a disappointing. I, I think most picks you're not sure. There's only a few yeah. throughout history where it's like this guy's generational, right? Like the Victors, the LeBrons. Mm-hmm. It's those levels of prospects. Like, you can't name any. Right. Zion was seen as generational. Mm-hmm. He might not be that at this point. He'll just be like a high-level all-star. Right. But his his talent was generational. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's just it's just slightly disappointing. Um, okay, we can get back to the East a little bit. Because at the bottom of the East for the play-in is all these teams that kind of, like, experimented for a while. How frustrating is Miami? Oof. That they just don't care about the regular season. Yeah, I don't know. They're and playing they, around they, they might just get back to the Eastern Conference Finals again. They could. Jimmy Butler just like doesn't care about scoring during the regular season. Mm-hmm. But it's, I, it's so strange. I'd be nervous to play around too much. But like you look at Chicago, failed experiment. Supposedly Lonzo Ball is supposed to be able to play again. I'm not so sure. Um, Atlanta, they went out they're, and got Dejounte Murray. They're they're stuck in a weird place right now. They traded away John Collins. None of it's worked out. Like you have a point guard averaging like twenty seven and eleven. Mm-hmm. You have another guy that's a borderline all star. You don't really know how to play with either of them. Yeah, Clint Capella's time is running out. Mm-hmm. DeAndre, a lot of the young guys you've drafted just haven't hit. Yep, they're they're not in a great place. Yeah, and then you have like Toronto traded away all their assets. They got rid of Van Fleet. They got rid of Pascal Siakam. They're kind of hitting reset. Brooklyn. Jeez, Brooklyn. They're in a horrible play. Oh, my God. They gave the bag to Cameron Johnson. Is Brooklyn's situation worse than the Pistons? I don't in think. Terms of, mm. In terms of, like, you don't have draft picks. Yeah, that's true. Like, what, what does Brooklyn have yeah. to look forward to? Yeah. At uh. least the Pistons are are have had one of the worst seasons. Talent-wise, they're not one of the worst teams ever. Mm-hmm. They've had one of, like, the five worst seasons in NBA history. Yeah. We still have players that we could look forward to. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn, does, they don't have. They have Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Cam Thomas. Do, do they think Cam Thomas is going to be there? Yeah, I don't know. Nick Claxton's like, turned into a pretty good player, but. Come, come on. No, I know. You had Jared Allen. Right. Well, that, <laughs> that's a whole different story. They had story. Jared Allen. That's a whole different story. Like, it, the Nets fans that actually exists, like, my God, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, in terms of a future, there is none. Yeah. I don't know if they're in a worse spot necessarily, but. Honestly, Washington is worse. Yeah, I think Washington might Washington be. Washington has less talent than Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. They're terrible, and they know their franchise can't make good draft picks. Mm-hmm. Like, Denny Avdia is looking like the best draft pick you've made in the past decade. Yeah. And all of a sudden. Charlotte looks like they might be okay. If they can get LaMelo Ball to stay healthy for once, that'll be the hardest part. But, like, they might be okay. I think LaMelo is going to be like Lonzo. You think it's the big baller brand shoes? I think he could be overrated soon. You think so? Yeah. Okay. 
I don't I, know. His style of play, mm-hmm. it's not I, it's not comparable to Russell Westbrook. Yeah. But there's a thing about when you watch LaMelo, a part of it is Charlotte, 100%. Yeah. But you watch, like, you would watch Russell Westbrook put up incredible po- in performances. Yeah. <clears throat> and their teams would barely be winning. Yeah. He yeah. would have to, like, force them to wins. He's And their, their rosters wouldn't be awful. I, I wouldn't. You could compare LaMelo like, a little bit. If Like, LaMelo, he's going to have a bunch of games with really nice stats. Yeah. And I think the team just isn't going to play very well. He, like. He borderline. He's not Tyrese Halliburton. Gives me a little bit of a Jordan Poole vibe, too. Oh, boy. Now we're getting not, in the dirt now. Not as, like. The LaMelo slander podcast. Not as crazy, but, like, he gets a little loose with the ball sometimes. Absolutely. There's still too much street ball in him. Yeah. And that's a part of his game and why he's so good. Yeah. I think he's but, more talent and I think he can figure it out. But yeah. I do agree with some of your some yeah. of your if points. If you flip LaMelo and Tyrese Halliburton, I don't know if Indiana wins still wins this many games. Yeah. Again, I think the hardest part is that he's just been hurt and yeah. he can't stay healthy. I think right Charlotte now. has more wins yeah. than Tyrese. Okay. Interesting. So just just a little small, very small tidbit of a controversial statement hmm. i didn't even realize the the playoffs are technically set it's just all seating yeah so nobody's fighting for position anymore okay interesting so pistons would you say, would you say washington is in the worst position of anybody yeah yeah i think so yeah. because they don't have players that you feel like you can build around even with guys like denny he's good but I don't know if he's a build around kind of guy. Kyle Kuzma, we knew was just you know to get some butts in the seats because he's he's a good player, but he's not. He can't be your number one guy. Jordan Poole was the same thing, right? He can't be your number one guy. Corey Kispert seems like he's going to be a solid role player. He could be a starter. Like Denny and Corey could be starters, but they can't be your number one, number two options. Um. So yeah, and besides that, they got. Like their roster list is just as long as the Pistons, basically. So, but the Pistons, I feel like, still have some more hope with who they have on the roster. Having just having Cade there makes you feel like there's there's something that they can do with the roster. I don't know. NBA is kind of a mess. Again, I can't wait to get Chris on, and we have to do a whole Pistons show. Um, wow, that took up a lot of time talking about the NBA a little more than I thought, which is fine. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention was Tigers baseball has started. We're not much of a baseball yeah. podcast. Um, if they play well and I continue feel, to improve, I feel like we say this exact statement at the beginning of every season, but it's true. <laughs> it is <laughs> like um, they don't look like a complete mess right now. Yeah, they're seven, even and though four. they're a half team. Yeah, they're seven and four. Yeah, uh, they started the season five and oh, mm-hmm. and uh, their pitching is good. Pitching's pretty good, really good at their, times. Their bats are non-existent, basically. They're winning games yeah. two to one. Shouts out to Spencer Torkelson. Yeah, uh, not really doing much. Uh, shout outs to Javi Baez. Shout his out contract. To, uh, we're, we're not going to talk about <laughs> that ghost of a player. He's like Darren Williams in Cleveland, Woo. basketball equivalent. Dang. Yeah, shouts out to Riley Green. Yeah. Barely con- hit uh, making contact. Mm-hmm. And just just shouts out to all these guys. Yeah. Not doing their jobs. <laughs> Remember, like two years ago, when people were excited about Akil Badu. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> talk about one of the greatest short stints in baseball mm-hmm. history. Yeah, that was a lovely. The time. Akil Badu hype train. Yeah. Um, Red Wings are on the verge of trying to make the playoffs, but um, it's I forgot what the what the score was last night. Yeah, they lost to the Capitals though, two to one, which was a huge game for them to try to get into the playoffs um they're not out of it by any means but now they play i think they play the penguins next let me pull this up just so we can we can keep our tabs on the other detroit teams yeah they play the penguins on thursday and the penguins are tied with the the red wings in points and so that's a huge game to win to stay up in the wild card uh, to make the playoffs. Then they play the Maple Leafs, which are a really good team. And then they end the season with two games against the Canadians, who are not a very good team. But if they drop those games, most likely we miss the playoffs. So 
if you're hoping for any playoff hockey, it's getting real tough. But there's still a chance. So we'll see. Um, so there's there's hockey going on. There's baseball going on. And this weekend, the Masters. One of the only few golf events that I watch the entire entirety of it. I watch it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Obviously, with work, I don't get to watch as much on Thursday and Friday. Um, but I try to tune in as much as I can. And then the weekend, I basically binge and sit there and watch the entire thing. Call me crazy, but I don't know. It's my uh, golf watching might go as far as watching Happy Gilmore and maybe some Tiger Woods highlights. Yeah. That's probably as far as it'll go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, with, with the Tigers, if they stay good, I say we make at least one mention of a player or yeah. something notable a week. Yeah. Shouts out to, is it, how's it pronounced? Tarek Scooble? How do you pronounce his first name? Yeah, I think it's Tarek School. Tarek? Tarek School. Tarek School is one of the better pitchers in baseball right now. Mm-hmm. To start, at least. Yeah. 292 ERA, 15 Ks, 1 and 0. Yep. He was one of our young yeah. talents from a few years ago. Uh, the big one is Casey Mize, if he's going to work out or not. Yeah. Uh, jury's still out. He's had his injuries. Um, but unfortunately, he might, he might not be that guy, which stinks because that was a big, big potential that we yeah. thought drafting him 482 era so far yeah six k's 139 whip yeah so the uh the tigers are catching up to the lions or the lions the pistons in uh missed draft picks recently so if torque can't get going if casey mize ends up not being the guy might be tough but they do have a lot of young pitchers they got some good guys in there um their their bullpen has actually been really good um yeah they got Andrew Chafin now. Um, I think he's kind of their reliever for like seven, eight innings. I don't know who their closer is at the moment. Again, I haven't done enough research, but. It's not Jason Foley, is it? I can't remember. Um, I think Alex Lang has been there. Okay. Yeah, I think he's been their closer for a lot of games. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll try I, to, I could be wrong. I'll try to up my, wrong, my baseball. But I've seen Alex, gain, Alex Lang finish several games. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll try to mix in some things. Um, next week we might, we might do some M- NFL draft talk a little bit. Yeah, just the beginning with the yeah. show coming up. We can talk about some prospects and things like that. Some guys. Um, and then the show after that will be the, um, mock draft and everything. So that's good. Going to be a fun one. NBA getting closer to the playoffs, college basketball, unfortunately over. So our college sports are done for the season. Um, yeah, we could have talked about women's college basketball if you wanted, but we could talk. I'm ashamed of myself for not bringing that up. Yeah. Oh well. But Caitlin Clark was taken down. Yeah. Don Stanley got it done. No surprise to me, honest. Yeah. The the Caitlin Clark hype is fun, but South Carolina is a whole different beast. Um, we could do a WNBA mock draft if you want next week. <laughs> okay. Never mind. <laughs> All right, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys uh, next time. Maybe the top three picks? That's probably... I don't even, that's too I mean, much. We know Caitlin is that's one. Far, I mean. We know Caitlin is one. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. <laughs>